the media's hypocritical hysteria over campus protests. Here is Amen, and let's listen. Pretty good segment. Israat University, Gaza's youngest university, was established in 2014 with a simple goal. Ensuring poverty would not stand in the way of any Palestinian that wanted to pursue a college degree. Israat was known for its towering main building and archway entrance, constructed as a love letter to Islamic architecture. The university was actually set to mark its 10th anniversary this year, and to celebrate that milestone, the school planned to open a public museum on campus, housing more than 3,000 artifacts, including relics from the Roman Empire to more modern pieces of Palestinian history and culture. However, Israel University and all of the history it housed within its walls has now been destroyed. On January 17th, the Israeli Defense Forces demolished the university's main building, reducing it to rubble in a matter of seconds. The Israeli military initially tried to justify this action, claiming that the campus had been, quote, used by Hamas for military activity and that there were concerns the group might use it to attack Israeli forces. But later, the Israeli military admitted there had been flaws in the operational process, including in the decision to destroy the entire building. However, Israel University was not alone in Gaza. According to an NBC News analysis, at least five of Gaza's seven major universities have been destroyed or damaged since Israel began its bombardment of the Gaza Strip. And as Professor Rashid Khalidi, a historian at Columbia University, noted, quote, when you destroy these kinds of institutions, you are not fighting Hamas. You are fighting. So what he's doing here, he's setting up his critique of the media protests, the, the hypocritical hysteria. He's pointing out this, what happened to the universities in Gaza is actually real damage that's happening to universities. What's happening in the United States is not that. That's basically what he's saying here, if you didn't catch on. But he's about to pivot and bring it back to the university protests here. Fighting the existence of the Palestinians. You are fighting their capability to have memory, to have records, and to be educated. UN experts are now sounding the alarm, expressing concern that these attacks on universities in Gaza are part of a much larger effort to comprehensively destroy the Palestinian education system an action known as scholasticide. For almost seven months, the war has halted the studies of at least 88,000 students, according to the Palestinian Authority's Ministry of Higher Education. But if you've turned on television here in America, it is apparently American universities <laughs> that are under attack. Right. As pro-Palestinian anti-war protests continue to spread to college campuses across the country, coverage of these demonstrations has dominated mainstream media. Here's just a really small glimpse at how these protesters have been described. Watch. I'm reminded of January the 6th. That's what this looks like to me. This might look like January 6th, but it's a thousand times worse. Charlottesville was a little peanut and the hate was the kind of hate that you have here. Harkening back to the 1930s in Europe, and I do not say that lightly. What? Keep marching for Hamas, kids. This is not what students bring to school. Hamas? is here. Even the notion of an encampment is a physical threat. We have a terrorist group walk, marching in New York right now. They're dumb and or unattractive. Take it to the back. <laughs> They've been brainwashed They're by TikTok dumb and to believe that Israel's actually committing a genocide. What's what? happening on college campuses is rooted in anti-Semitism. They are embracing the rhetoric and the ideology of Hamas. Un understand, understand, these two, this is a Democrat on the left and a Republican on the right. They're there to show bipartisan support for their, their repression and attacking um, our, these protesters' right to uh, protest. Notice the over-the-top descriptions in this little montage that they played. Just astonishing. Let's rewind slightly and keep playing. Theology of Hamas. Did that negotiating with terrorists work for them? We are going to have fascism as a result of these protests. We are going to have fascism as a result of these protests. Crazy. Absolute hysteria from the media. 
outrage over protesters setting up tents, occupying buildings or breaking windows as Gaza's entire education system lies in ruins. U.S. media have become obsessed with this manufactured idea of violence sweeping across American campuses, all while failing to cover the very real violence that has decimated an entire generation's access to education. Like I said, I was surprised to hear this on MSNBC, that they let this through the cracks. Let's continue. But the media isn't doing this alone. Here in New York City, Mayor Eric Adams has given them an assist, making himself, as the nation's jeet here describes, the public face of the nationwide campus crackdown on pro-Palestinian activism. At a press conference this week, Adams attempted to rationalize the NYPD's crackdown on Columbia University, claiming he's preventing young people from being, quote, radicalized by what? professionals. New York City Police Deputy Commissioner Tariq Shepard has gone in on the baseless fear mongering as well, touting bike chains. Yeah, bike chains, literally bike chains sold at a discount by Columbia University as some kind of sinister weapon that has been brought in by outsiders. If you want to because you want to lock your bike up and prevent it from being stolen. It is, this is just, I've never seen, it's, it's been a long time, I've, I haven't seen this over-the-top sort of uh, rhetoric about protests like this. I've never seen it this crazy, to be just uh, quite honest with you. This is, this is crazy to me. Debunking the outside agitator trope amid pro-Palestinian campus protests. Just As pro-Palestinian and anti-war protests spread to college campuses across the country, there was one phrase that kept popping up. Outside agitators. Outside agitators. Those outside agitators. Them as outside agitators. Outside agitators. Outside agitators. Outside agitators. Paid outside agitators. Outside agitators. In recent days, university administrators, law enforcement officials, politicians have all trotted out that familiar trope, the so-called outside agitator, accusing professional organizers or nefarious foreign actors of hijacking student-led protests and encouraging its participants to adopt more aggressive and violent tactics. Just yesterday, a bipartisan duo consisting of Congressman Republican Mike Lawler and Democrat Josh Gottheimer called on the FBI to investigate who's its shadowy figures. Insane. A similar sentiment was shared online by the NYPD chief of patrol, who accused a, quote, unknown entity of radicalizing our vulnerable students and taking advantage of their young minds. He urged his federal partners to, quote, follow the money. Now, we should be clear here. Some of the hundreds of people arrested at campuses across the country over the last few weeks are Jewish. have not been students including at Columbia University, where city officials say 29% of those arrested last week had no connection to the school. But as the New York Times reports, there's little evidence that those so-called outsiders had any role in organizing or escalating the protests. In fact, many were arrested without ever having set foot on campus. And according to a review of police documents, only a small handful of the nearly three dozen arrestees lacked ties to the university had also participated in other protests around the country. Quite a blow to this professional protester narrative that is being pushed around by law enforcement. The Times examination also revealed that far more of the unaffiliated protesters had no such histories. Instead, those demonstrators said they arrived at Columbia in response to social media posts or word of mouth invites. And that includes Matthew Cavalletto, a 52-year-old computer programmer who's lived within a half a mile of Columbia University for most of his life. Cavaletta was arrested on the... So these outside agitators end up being just people, local people to Columbia University in this example, who was outraged by what they were seeing on TV and came to support it. You mean like what, how normal protests grow? People see and they get outraged and then you're going to join a protest. That's how normal protests is created but they you you see the empire framing they want to they want to say anti-semitism they want to say uh violence and they want to say outside agitator china's paying for it russia's paying for this shit it's never just 
uh, American born citizens disagree with the genocidal policy of their government. It's never that. This is from Al Jazeera. This is their opinion. Mainstream media's coverage of the campus encampments and the violence against them has exposed it as a central actor in the power elite that sustains Israel's war and simultaneously tries to silent, silence Palestinians and criminalize anyone who supports them. Let me say that again because that's a very important uh, first part. The mainstream media coverage of the campus in the campus encampments and the violence against them has exposed mainstream media as a central actor in the power elite that sustains Israel's war and simultaneously tries to silence Palestinians and criminalize anyone who supports them. The mainstream media has widely condemned students and accused them of using hate speech and hate symbols. In the words of the U.S. president, endorsing terrorism, act advocating for Israel's destruction, and resorting to anti-Semitic anti anti slurs and threatening and frightening Jewish students. Everywhere they look in the student protest encampment, the media oracles have been terrorists in training, anti-Semites anti at work, Jew haters being groomed, universities collapsing, and Nazi mobs in the making. Prominent TV hosts have unleashed passionate, and we're going to get to that, Dana Bash, prominent TV hosts like Dana Bash have unleashed passionate, vicious diatribes against the students who have clamped out who have camped out to demand an end to America's role in Israel's genocide against Gaza and peace and justice for all in Palestine. MSNBC's Morning Joe show, reportedly a Biden favorite, is one glaring example of systematic biased TV programming that sometimes veers into incitement against the student protests and the university administrators. One of its hosts, Joe Scarborough, has claimed that students want to, quote, wipe out all Jews, end quote, quote again, they are Hamas on campuses, on college campuses, end quote. And they are, quote, not helping those of us who want to fight fascism in America, end quote. His co-host, Mika Przinsky and wife, had said that the campus protests, quote, Look like January 6th, end quote, referring to the riot by Donald Trump supporters on Capitol Hill in January 2021. Such unsustained allegations against the protesters are common to uh, varying degrees across all of the major networks, including ABC, CNN, and MS, MS, I'm sorry, NBC. A great novel experiment in political physics is underway in the United States as the unstoppable moral force of youth-led protests against Israel genocide war, genocidal war in Gaza runs into an immovable object of the American power elite support for it. So the student protests against the U.S. empire elite are going at it. The billionaire class that funds all of these campuses, all of these universities. In this clash, the uh, two critical forces have been weaponized. The U.S. mainstream media that heavily uh, disseminates Israeli propaganda and shapes many local, state, and national policies, policies and the scourge of anti-Semitism that has been unfairly used to demonize and silence Palestinians and shift attention away from the U.S. enabled Israeli genocide in Gaza. Since Israel launched its assault on Gaza, President Biden's steadfast support for it has galvanized young Americans and pushed them to mobilize. They have formed decisive coalitions with Muslim and Arab Americans, Jews, Jewish, Black, and Hispanics, and Native communities, labor unions, and churches. They have given notice that if the U.S. the U.S. continues to support the war, 
they will abandon Democratic candidate in the November election, which would likely be fatal for the party. And this is and that uh, that last line speaks to what I have been saying. This is not just for 2024. They are losing people for a generation. It's not just 2024 we're talking about uh, the Democrats losing. 